Hello, hello. How are you, Catherine? I'm very good. I'm happy to be here. Where are you good calling here. us from? I'm currently in Campania, Italy, so in the south of, of Italy. Nice. And at do you live PM. there now? At 11 p.m. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you I for do. taking the time to do this. I know what it's like to deal with uh, major time zone differences. It's quite a situation. I'm getting used to it very much so, yeah. so it's, it's fine. But that sounds so nice. So, so you're living in Italy, right? I am. So I have like right now a year long residency that I was able to get and um, still taking it day by day. But it's kind of surreal that I can technically say I'm living here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's actually, um, I noticed your, you know, your story, cause you were telling me how you closed the gap between you and your partner, um, with copywriting. And I was like, that's an amazing, amazing story. <laughs> and I want to hear more about it. So why don't we just kind of back up a little bit and you can kind of start by sharing with us a little bit about how you, like what you were doing before, right? Your way to freedom, how you came to find it. Um, and then how it got you, how you ended up in Italy and everything in between. Cause I know it's been quite a journey, so I'm really excited to hear it. So, yeah. So whenever awesome. you're ready. Yeah. Sounds good. So, um, in 2020, like the end of 2020, I was working, it, I had been working at a non little nonprofit for about five years and I loved it, but I was working in development and it was a very broad title. I was doing a lot of different things. And the nonprofit was a school actually. So COVID was insane trying to navigate online learning mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling kind of burnt out because of that. And I also was feeling burnt out because I had this boyfriend in Italy. We had been together about a year before COVID hit and then COVID hit and it just seemed impossible um, on many friends. <laughs> and so mm. in December, 2020, I had convinced my workplace to let me do three months distance remote work and mm. um, come to Italy. And it's funny looking in hindsight, I was convincing, I convinced them to let me go because I realized if I was working remotely and focusing on the programs I'm supposed to be developing and writing more for this, I'd actually be able to get so much more done. And in hindsight, I'm realizing I was kind of proposing, like, how about I just focus on copywriting and more yeah. marketing strategy for you? Anyway, and I only kind of seen that in hindsight. So anyway, they agreed. And I went at like 4 a.m. to the airport to finally get to Italy and see my boyfriend. And the like the uh, guidelines had changed like the night, like midnight the night before or something. And I wasn't able to get to Italy. And no. I went to like a province next door, basically, and tried to fly out from there. And couldn't get out from there either but then um because I had done that when I came back to my province I had to quarantine even though it was just a couple mm. hours away so I'm like in this terrible quarantine of complete defeat being like okay nothing is going to work out and um one night just went on Instagram which I didn't even have Instagram it was like the little nonprofit I was running I had their Instagram and went on like search and somehow, I don't even know how, um, through some <laughs> telepathic algorithm that you have going on, landed on some of your ads. And uh -huh. um, I was so struck by how, I was struck first by like freedom and writing and work from wherever you want, um, mm. having freedom to do kind of what you want to do within your job. Um, yeah. And it just, it just felt too good to be true. So I kind of kept searching. I think I stayed up all night that night, just searching and verifying like this, it's probably not true. How can you really do yeah, all right. these things? <laughs> um, Doing your due dil diligence as you should. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I searched through, watched a bunch of student success stories and I just thought, okay, this is like a key. Like if this is legit, then this is my way out of this mess that I'm in. This is a way that can connect so many different things for me in this moment. And I think a couple of weeks later, I bought the course at the end of January, uh, uh -huh. 2021. That's so funny. Wild. How, how long had you and your partner been split up at this point because of COVID? Cause this was a I, thing that like, I, 
I had quite a few people in my life that were dealing with this and my heart, like I, ugh. I luckily somehow did get there in the summer of 2020. I was like a little tiny window where you could travel. So I did make it here for a couple of weeks. And then I had just gone back and Canada never did open up. So he was never able to come see me, but I was able to come here. And then, yeah. And then in December, it just was closed for a full year. So then after that, it was after that summer, it was a full year before we were able to see each other again. So it was, it was a lot. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so you get the course and then you. So I get the course and, um, I was still working full time. And like I said, it was a very busy job. We were navigating like on and off doing online learning and then back in school. And I was supposed to be helping with fundraising and development, which was very difficult during COVID. And so there was a lot going on. It was very busy. Um, and, but I decided that I was yeah. just thinking about like fundraising for a nonprofit during COVID. That's a bit like a just nightmare. Insane. Yeah, it was a nightmare. Because <laughs> there was just so much fear. Everybody was like, no, yes. I don't know what's happening. I'm going to yeah. just like pause my life across the it board. It was a lot of things on pause and like pivoting every campaign and every kind of strategy as we went. And so mm-hmm. when I, um, I kind of decided once I got the course that I just, Getting the course, I was like, I'm putting two feet in this. I just have to make it work. If I'm going to spend yeah. this money, I'm going to go in on this. I'm just going to make it work. And so I had planned to try and move, um, finish my job and move by that summer. Um, but because work was really crazy and then I was starting to pack up my apartment, think like life was just crazy. I was slowly picking away at the course. But a couple of days after I bought the course, I was telling my sister-in-law that I had decided that I was going to try copywriting. I just kind of learned what it was, but wanted to try my hand at it. And she was like, oh my gosh, I just had a friend reach out to me asking if I knew of any copywriters. She, she runs this wellness store and she needs a copywriter. And why don't I connect you two? And so I was like, you know, I connected with this client, but I was very uh, hesitant. I think I, I maybe put a, submit a question in one of the Facebook questions to you, like, I'm not sure what I do. I haven't taken the course yet, but I do have somebody <laughs> interested in being my client. So I did like a test piece for her and connected with her through a client. I like ran to the client acquisition um, module in, yes, in your yes. course and um, got through that and was very honest with her about where I was at, but also um, mm. had a lot of your mindset in my mind and the stuff that you teach. And so that has been, I still have her as a client. So that was, that was over a year ago now, but it was like a couple days after I had bought the course. That That's I, so I wild. Yeah. So then that's, I love that like, you still have her too. Like it was like, a high and I do, and client. I still, I love and value that client a lot, even just that she would take a risk on, on me so early on and that it, that it worked out. And that's a special client to me for sure. And I also real quick, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I love that you just like jumped to the part that you needed. Sometimes people ask me that they're like, somebody reached out and I want to take this call, but I'm not there yet. I'm like, just jump ahead. It's all good. Like you, you can, can totally watch the still discovery call that. lesson. Yeah, I still do that because sometimes you're in a groove with one client and then somebody asks you something that you haven't done in a while or that you haven't touched in a while. And there's always that, that room to go back and forth. So no, that's totally, totally love that. Yeah. So it was, so then I was like, so then I had this client plus my work, plus trying to make plans to like move continents. And so it was just a crazy busy time. Um, came here last summer and then had visa issues, had to go back to Canada and have kind of been back and forth ever since. But now I am technically here and I've just had to visit. I had a wedding and then a funeral and things I had to go for. Mm. But in all of that was just like, okay, if I remain faithful to these steps, like pay attention to the steps. And then the other major thing for me was um, kind of what you start everything off with is uh, changing your mindset and really Mm -hmm. over this and, and realizing that, um, I have the freedom to create this as I want to create it. And that I Mm -hmm. I can actually trust my intuition and I can grow this as I want. Like that's been really, really huge for me. And so Mm -hmm. somehow, whether I was like at a cafe last summer, I had to be in Rome because my boyfriend was taking care of a sick person there. And so sometimes I was at a cafe like in front of the Coliseum or other times I was like in an airport lounge or other times I was like in my parents basement anywhere everything in between um, yeah picking away at this <laughs> and and trying to make it go of it and now I'm I'm doing it full-time and it's working and 
um, I can't believe even when you say like, oh, you live in Italy. I'm like, I can't believe I'm here a year later and that's that's where I am. But it's definitely because of of this course. I, I love this story. I love your story so much because <laughs> I don't I, it's just because it's you're you're really taking the whole like freedom to work from anywhere because like a lot of people love that part of it but we still stay home and we still work mostly from like where we where our community is of course and I just love that you're living in Italy after being in Italy last fall I'm like oh, yeah I want to live in Italy <laughs> <laughs> it's so gorgeous it's, it's so a gorgeous. beautiful place to live it's really and to beautiful. be and to be working from a cafe and just like have the Coliseum outside, like that must be so <laughs> surreal. You're like, this is, this is my life now. Uh, yeah. It's so. kind of hard to believe sometimes. What are some of your favorite things about living in Italy? Oh my gosh. The culture here is, is amazing. It's not, mm -hmm. it is very laid back. Um, mm -hmm. They're not nearly as like, productive <laughs> so it's it's kind of lined up with me getting this work too because I really have more of a freedom to align my work schedule to what I want to do and I have the free more freedom and more time in the day to explore which is amazing um but that real there's just a it's definitely a relaxed culture and that's amazing but just the history here it's like being in Canada, we have like, oh, this is a hundred years old. And then here, yes. like, this was here in like 500 BC. <laughs> the history is like mind blowing. That was one of my favorite things was just walking around. I'm like, everything is like older than our entire country. It's so, <laughs> it's so really hard to comprehend. Yeah, it is. So tell us a little bit about, um, your, your niche, who you write for, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Because people always love to have a glimpse into another freelancer's life because there's so many ways to like set that up and make it work for you. So yeah, any insights you've got there? I, I think, love to hear that. I think I mentioned this before, but I, I definitely have kind of taken my own way um, mm -hmm. in some ways. And then, and other, yeah, mostly I have taken kind of my own path, but um, because I got that client so early on, and kind of had to start jumping around in different modules as she asked me certain things. And I was so I was working a lot and trying to squeeze things in. So it wasn't it wasn't until last summer that I really started like course by course, module by module going mm -hmm. through the course. Um, and I was right from the very beginning, very torn between working in education, which is um, mm -hmm. where I had been working for a long time. I had experience in that. I was very comfortable writing in that. Um, but also my personal interest was in natural wellness. And so I was kind of torn between the two. And um, as things worked out last summer, um, when I was just starting to um, kind of get serious, I finished my work. I was in Rome and trying to get serious about really getting things going. And I was trying to launch a website. Um, one of the organizations that I had been working with through my previous job found out that I was doing this full time and they asked if I would write for them, like start writing a few articles a month for them and um, doing a little bit of doing some email newsletters. And so I started working for them and they had a huge potential. So I ended up doing a big proposal for them, again, very much based on the mindset that I had learned from the course of like pitch big, pitch what you want to pitch and um, and know your value and then deliver on that value. But mm -hmm. you, know, kinda, you can kind of call the shots and say, I think you should do this. And I think you should pay me this to do it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I did that, never would have done that had I not encountered uh, this, but um, did that, they accepted it. And so they've become my biggest client. So nice. I started with this natural wellness store and now I've had this educational client. And then partway through the year, the person who had replaced me at my previous job had to start working part-time and so I proposed to them that I take all of the writing and stuff that I had been doing previously now I have like this skill set and I understand even if it's it's fundraising and it's growing an audience it was like so yeah. exciting to think of being able to go back to that and use all of that for this little mission that I loved yes. um, without wearing all the different hats so now I have that nonprofit as a client as well but I'm just doing their writing and kind of some strategy for them, which I absolutely love. Um, so those all kind of just naturally came to me just through the connections that I had. Um, and those That's are the amazing. only clients I'm working with right now. And it's, it got so busy, especially traveling back and forth to Canada that 
I feel like I'm just beginning because I still know that I would like to um, follow a little bit more strongly how you lay things out in the course. And I know that <laughs> there's a way for me to work less and make more money. I just like, I have a hundred percent trust that it's there. And I, I know that when, as life arrives at a point where I can pivot and readjust my schedule and readjust my clients that like I'm headed in that direction and I'm excited for that. But for right now it's working for me. I really, really wanted to work with clients that I really value and whose missions mm-hmm. and, and values that I share. And so, um, so I'm, yeah, I just have the three right now. I've had like little ones on and off throughout. Um, yeah. And I've actually turned down a couple, um, again, just based on like, okay, I don't want to get back into working 50 hours a week. I don't want to be overly stressed all the time. And I don't mm-hmm. want to write for anyone whose values I don't, I don't agree with. So, um, so yes, yeah, I love all of this. So how many hours a week are you working? I'm working, it depends a little bit on the week, but I'm working probably around 20, 25 hours a week. Yes. And in January, I just was like going back over some notes that I'd written in January, but um, January of this year, I was, I had just arrived back in Italy and got COVID and I'm in like two weeks of quarantine for Christmas and New Year's in Italy and was writing about like how much I despite the insane amount of setbacks and things that had happened this past year, how much I never stopped trusting the method of the core of write your way to freedom. Like I, oh man, I just was like, no, this is a, like, no, there was so many chaotic things that happened. And I just knew like, it's all there. And when I want to redo something, when something's not working, every even little problem that would come up, like when I would realize like, oh, I kind of need people I'm working alone a lot I need people and then I realize like there's a huge community there or there's a huge community here of like digital nomads and people that are working Mm -hmm. freelance here that I in Italy that I can connect with that I didn't know about so I've always found like very simply and easily a solution to whatever problem I had so I remember in January being like okay I've been a mess in this I've just been like running by the seat of my pants flying by the seat of my pants Um, I need some sort of a goal, like an actual goal of what I want to make. And so Mm -hmm. I was still just getting uh, the third client and I was like, okay, by April, I want to make like 4,000. Like that'll be just something that I can work towards. And then eventually, like I said, when I'm in a place in my life where money is the thing I want, then I can kind of push for more than that. And then I just realized like at the end of April, I think I invoiced just over 6,500 for yeah. that month. And I was like, I, <laughs> like, again, money wasn't even, that was not my first goal at all for now, but it was just kind of like, it really is the kind of work that so much more quickly adds up and, mm-hmm. and the freedom to build how that works up is just, is so there. And also mm-hmm. I know that when my freedom leads me astray, that the structure is all in your course. <laughs> I'm like convinced that <laughs> It, like the step-by-step methods are so there and yeah um, so it's kind of the oh. best of both worlds for sure I love I love so many like pieces of that especially I love I love how you're prioritizing your time like that was like number one for me as well is to get some of that time back and to be in Italy and like working 25 <laughs> hours a week like what a dream and and to be earning enough to be earning more than enough is like just so amazing. And I love, cause when I first reached out to you after I heard your, sto- your story, I was like, oh my gosh, I would love to hear more of the story. You said to me, you're like, I don't know. I, I did do some things kind of like differently on my own. Like, you know, I think because you're referring mostly to like finding clients through your network, which I love. And it's, uh, and I just love that. Cause it's, you've made, you've taken what you've needed. Right. And anytime you're like, Hmm, this area is like, there's some friction or resistance or not working right you've gone back to get more. And so you're just taking what you need. And honestly, like, that's amazing. (laughs) I like love that. It's a, it's a slightly different way, but that's one of the reasons there's like many different options and how we can make this look the way we want it to look like that's the in in game here is to like set up your business and it will change. As you mentioned, like there might be times where you're like, I'd like to put in more hours and really like raise what I'm doing. And like, that's an option. You can always refine this process to make it like work for you. 
And so I just and that's love what's wild. That. Like, yeah, I I never imagined doing this for work. And as seasons change in my life, like all I'm thinking now is when something needs to change, I just kind of redo what I'm doing and lean more into something else that works, but maintain this freelance copywriting. There's so much freedom within that. So I can keep changing and pivoting as life uh, evolves, but it's, I don't ever plan on going back to that 40 hour, like set salary, like you talk about the like fluorescent no lights and it just like so deeply hit me. I'm like the freaking fluorescent lights that are at every workplace. Like um, it's just, and so I, I just, I keep trusting, like there's so much freedom within this to do it and keep changing it how you want to change it. And then like yes. tons of work because I haven't tried. That's my next thing is to build a website and try to start finding uh, <laughs> clients. But I've, but it really does go to show. And I think you even said that, like, first reach out to your network. And there are yeah. often, like, you have no idea what little small business is there, what friend of a mm-hmm. friend heard of somebody that needs someone. And, and so there mm-hmm. is a lot, there's a lot there. Totally. And like, I always say, like, there's also different people who have different needs up the skill ladder. Like, there are people who hiring a copywriter who's studying the craft but like just starting out like that's gonna work for some people because that's like maybe all they can afford they're a small small business and then you know you're gonna get like there's just every at every step of your skill set um there's a business out there that's going to like benefit from you like giving it your all showing up and trying your hardest and getting better and um yeah I just love that it's especially like everything you're saying is like especially um pertinent I feel like right now because a lot of people are you know it's like conversation and whispers online and on the media about this like impending recession that's coming and I'm getting questions about it in the live Q and A's and I'm like guys like we got this you know like know. this is one of those career paths that because of the flexibility and because you know, you are relying on more than one client rather than like a business that you have a nine to five and you're, you're more like resilient to the changes. And we saw that with the pandemic. And it's honestly, one of the reasons I chose this path was because of the 2008 recession. So it's like, we're coming around for like another recession, which happens. It's natural, um, part of the flow of the economy, but I feel, I can already feel the people kind of freaking out a little bit. I'm like, guys, you've got it. You've got the things that you need and you just got to stay open, stay flexible. And yeah, that so I don't know if you, thing, you have any thoughts on that, but. Well, just that I actually never imagined in the beginning of this, that once I got established that it would actually feel more secure than a regular 40 hour week. I did not anticipate, I was like, okay, this will be all risk all the time and I'm going to do it anyway. But then mm-hmm. I was like, okay, like at one point I had four clients right now I have three, but I'm like, okay, they would have to all at the same time up and leave all four different clients. Like it, it's so much less likely than when I just had one job and, and establishing relationships with these people too, goes a really long way for even feeling yeah. secure when you You're have like- a rapport with them. And so yeah. that was something I wasn't anticipating that like this actually feels more secure. And like I said, as life changes, I can change the job to keep meeting that instead of having to just quit because all of a sudden I have to go do something Mm -hmm. or life is changing or I have to move again. Um, It just stays with me and I just, it just keeps evolving. Yeah. You have to like start and find a new job and start at the bottom of another corporate ladder, climb your way up. You just restructure and refine. And anytime there's like been frustrations in my business, or I get to a point where even I'm feeling bored, I'm like, okay, back to the drawing board. What can I do to adjust my work life so that it fits me better? And there's just so many options. And I don't know, you had mentioned wanting to like, uh, I don't know, maybe start, restart, start to think about restructuring work, but I don't know if you've checked out the new lesson, the next level offer lesson, but I feel like that might be the thing that you our, our, I our have wanting. heard about it. I have heard about it. Yes, I plan to, uh, <laughs> because two of my clients are in education, the summer is going to be a little bit slower, which I'm loving. And I just got back from two weeks traveling all around Italy with my family, which was lovely. And so now 
there's a, there are a few courses that I've been meaning to hit, but now is the time for me. Yeah. So there's some, there's some new lessons in there for sure. Yes. Um, well, I'm curious, actually, there was a question about, um, how do you transfer your business from one country to another, or is most of your clientele in your country of origin? Cause this is, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but this is something that people uh, worry about wanting to take their work with them. Yes. So for me, all of my clients are still Canadian. They're actually all mm -hmm. still almost local to where I was from. Um, and so I've just been dealing with like Canadian tax and stuff. And I haven't, I've only been in Italy for six months and I, I don't have a, a permanent residence here. So I haven't started dealing with that yet. Um, but I am in groups of people that are freelancers working in Italy and they're, there are people that are doing it and figuring it out. I haven't yet, but, but it's, it's very doable. And actually Italy, I don't know about other countries, but Italy is in the process, like right at this moment of making a digital nomad visa. So yes, was, have you heard about that? Not Italy specifically, but I'm pretty sure Spain already has one and it's like becoming a thing. It's like, becoming a thing, which is very yeah. exciting for people. So instead of having to like get a job, at a specific mm -hmm. location in Italy, you can actually get apply for a work visa as a like a traveling freelancer. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. It's smart because before that existed, digital nomads just like popped up in countries <laughs> and like paid taxes in their home country, even though they'd like lived there for three years. Exactly. And it's yeah. like all these countries are suddenly realizing, wait a second. <laughs> this is huge untapped territory. Yeah, we, we yeah. need to we need to be taxing these digital nomads. Which, but the yes. thing is, is if they get that and then they don't have to pay taxes in their country, like the States, I mean, yeah. that's going to be a game changer for people. I yes. love that you talked about groups. Are they Facebook groups? Yes. Yeah. yeah I was everyone, say, there's a few of them. Yeah. One of mine uh, that I've always turned to for questions moving from country to country is called female digital nomads. It's massive. Okay. And if you ever, and I'm just throwing this out there for the person who asked that question, anyone else who's interested in it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like Facebook groups specific to each country, specific to even like cities yes. um, where you can just ask people like what they've you done. Can. And that question um, specifically comes up a lot. Like I'm in this country dealing with this tax issue. What do I do? And then everyone's mm -hmm. kind of there. It's incredible. The communities that are out there when you tap into different freelance or digital mm -hmm. nomad communities, even here in Italy, I've found there's all kinds of like English co-living spaces you can go for a month and you're doing your own thing or retreats that like I've been invited to just from being connected with people that are around here different freelancers from all over the world coming together to like eat Italian food and spend a few hours a day working and it's really really amazing that that that's set up like here in Italy I assume that's in other countries as well um, oh totally in fact when I travel when I travel, I try to like get tapped into those communities, either through Facebook groups or co-working spaces or other like meetups, because it tends to be people who are like one open to meeting more people because they're like, so this is not their country of origin. And two, uh, you're kind of end up hanging out with like other entrepreneurs, other freelancers, which is really cool. Um, and then also oftentimes people who have been living there like a little bit longer than like somebody who would just be a tourist. And so they've got great advice, you know, yeah. great insider tips, wonderful restaurants to eat at. So That's even cool. when I travel and I'm in a place for like a week, I try to like find those, find those people. That's awesome. Like, yeah. 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 So the help is out there for sure. Totally. Totally. Well, thank you so much for being here at 11 o'clock at night in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it. My I would joy. Love to I would love to ask one more question. And also if you have anything else you didn't touch on that you'd like to touch on, I'd obviously love to hear it. But I always love to ask if you could like go back and talk to yourself when you were, you know, scroll at Instagram and just not sure about the next step and thinking about potentially like signing up for Write Your Way to Freedom and probably freaking out a little bit. Like what would you tell yourself back then? <laughs> I think the biggest um, thing that I realized early on was that the mindset change that had to happen in order for me to survive the early days of this, of like the vulnerability of um, telling a client I'm actually worth this money or pitching myself to a client um, was that it was going to be incredibly healthy 
to adopt this new mindset. Like all of the things I had to go through to kind of get to a place where I was comfortable enough pitching myself, pitching my own work. Um, like it was, that was the hardest part of it, even though life has been really crazy and it was hard to squeeze a lot of things in, or in different places, but the hardest part was the mindset and by far the healthiest thing. When I look back at the way I perceived myself in the workplaces I had, even though I was successful and I was doing a really good job, I had no idea that I had the value that I didn't know I was offering the value that I was, because again, you're just kind of in a workplace and there's employee a, mindset employee yeah. mindset and so to just just me personally what it has helped me to realize about myself has been huge and then that mm. makes work much easier once you've kind of grasped that a little bit and it's always a work in progress but I think um I think what I thought was okay this is just like a super risky way, but I'm going to do it anyway to just get to Italy and I'll figure it out after that. And it has really been a real life shift. And, and that came from the mindset that, that it had to start out with. And I think mm -hmm. that I would, I think that I would be, yeah, I would be excited to go back and tell her like, this is good. This is not just like going to answer the distance problem, but this is really healthy. This is like a really good life step to move mm -hmm. in this direction. And I think that that's what your course really offers like you have all of the practical tools everything that anybody would need to make this work but the mindset for me was just so key and once you open your mindset then the whole world opens up it's like yes skills are cool yes. and learning that stuff is awesome but until your mind until you open that mind and it kind of goes back to like those questions of what if a recession happens what if well, if your mind is just open to like, we're doing this, we're right, making it work. I'm going to learn how to make it work. I'm going to lean into the problems. I'm going to face yes. them head on. I'm going to admit my faults. I'm gonna, like then the whole, it just doesn't like those things just bounce off. It's like, it doesn't matter. We're going to figure it out as we go. And so to me, that was the biggest thing is like diving into that mindset, getting that under, like I said, it took a while from having worked in different mm -hmm. positions where you're giving everything and nothing's cut. You're not getting any higher. You're like, do it all the work, but nothing's really changing in the workplace. Um, and so it took a few months to shed that. And I think that you, you really, that was the biggest thing that stood out to me was how big you were on that. I knew that that was like important to you and you kept hounding that. And that's really <laughs> the first thing that I took from it and the most yes. helpful and the most important that I didn't know it would be so personally healthy for me to to adopt that that's, and to explore that. Yeah, and that's still like one of my, I freaking love everything you just said. Like <laughs> brought, it brought some tears into my eyes, but that's the thing that I love about this the most is that you're not like giving your left hour energy and time to like improving life. And like for business to get better and less stressful, like you gotta work on yourself and your own mindset and your own beliefs yeah. and things like that. And as you do that, work gets better and life gets a little better totally. and a little easier. And then you're just like cruising along and you're like, what? Totally. This is a whole new like way of living life. And um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what that's amazing. I wish you could go back and tell her, but she probably had to learn those lessons. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> she's been the lesson. <laughs> All right. I'm sure you're tired. We have one small question that I think yeah, I know no the problem. answer to, but do you speak Italian fluently? And if so, have you considered taking on any Italian clients? Um, I'm not there. I am not at Italian clients yet. <laughs> My boyfriend is actually a naturopath who I should be running all of his stuff. I should be running all of his online stuff, but I'm like, I'm not there yet. I'm slowly learning. I wish I knew more. Um, the problem in Italy is that every little, I'm in a tiny, tiny little village and they don't even speak Italian. They speak like a dialect of Italian. And so mm. when I'm around town, I'm listening to something that's not actually Italian. It's like a version of Italian <laughs> and I'm trying to like mute it out so that I can learn proper Italian. Um, <laughs> it's a work in progress but maybe one day but also the other thing about working abroad is that English is so highly valued everywhere and so if they find English writers and people that can um, promote their things in English that's a huge huge mm -hmm. uh, untapped territory there's lots of work there yeah I feel like copywriting in another language would be like you would need a s exceptional level of like yeah because it's not just grammatical 
grammatically no, correct. It's like, like you gotta know all the nuances. And lingo. And slang, yeah. <laughs> you gotta know phrases that are hip, like the ones yeah. that are like have are whole gone now. Level. Yeah, it's, that's yeah. like hard. Do you have? Are you picking up a a countryside Italian accent? Has anybody told you? Um, in Italy, in Italian or in English, mm -hmm. in Italian. Like, is your Italian picking up a countryside accent? I'm asking because when is. I was when I was in Colombia, all the Colombians called me a Mexicana. Like they told me I was had a, I was a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> my Spanish my Spanish apparently sounds Mexican which I like kind of love so. yeah there are so many different dialects that everyone in Italy has an accent to everyone else because so I don't even know where I'm you don't know. right now but yeah. <laughs> it's not square on anywhere <laughs> yeah. uh, well thank you for taking the time to do this I so appreciate it I love your story love your story it was also so lovely to get to talk with you more too, and uh yeah thank you thank see you. you see you in the community you. bye yes bye. good night good night bye, guys.